Well, welcome back to another Stand on Guard Take 5, where we bring you the news as quickly as possible. And, of course, we'll be doing our regular show this week, but I want to focus on four asp aspects of the news this, uh, today, and that's uh, the recent uh, tete a tete between Alberta Premier Daniel Smith and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. They met in Calgary. Trudeau ostensibly was there for the Calgary Stampede. He always comes out every year, looks ridiculous in his cowboy hat. But he sat there while Daniel Smith basically read the riot act. <laughs> Alberta's, how Alberta is going to pursue its own energy agenda uh, with or without Justin Trudeau. And, of course, there's a neat little clip with Trudeau trying to flip some pancakes at the Stampede breakfast. And he has a little disaster. So that's always fun. We're also going to be looking at how CBC has again uh, retracted a story. This one was about Daniel Smith sending an email to the Crown prosecutor in regards to the Coots border crisis incident during the Freedom Convoy protest. And not true. And CBC knew that, and they waited until after the, elect, the Alberta election to actually make the retraction. And interestingly enough, just a, a little over a month ago, about two months ago now, CBC also retracted another Freedom Convoy story. And this was about how much foreign money was given to the, the Give, Send, Go campaign. And about 88% of that money was Canadian. And CBC pontificated that it was all coming from not only American and U.S. sources, but nefarious white supremacist sources, as they always love to suggest. So we'll be talking about that. And, of course, we'll be talking about the uh, Sheila Lewis's fight to get an operation paid for in the United States that's not being done in Canada because she hasn't received the COVID-19 vaccination. You think that's impossible? No. Yeah. The numbers are going up, but not fast enough. So we, we've got we've to knock the door on that one. So anyway, so we're going to start with this great little <laughs> video here. It's uh, And I'll, I'll be interrupting as we go along, but it is, it is quite fascinating. That we need to discuss. I had sent a letter to the Prime Minister saying that we'd like to bring our emissions reduction and energy development plan with a uh, target of carbon neutrality by 2050 in alignment with some of the objectives of the federal government. And that will require us to have some conversations about three areas that I don't think we have agreement uh, on yet, but I hope to. We would like to establish a working group so that we could talk about how we might be able to achieve a net zero power grid. But I've uh, indicated to the Prime Minister that that... You, you notice how Justin Trudeau is just nodding away? Like he's... He, go go ahead, say whatever you have to. <laughs> he's, not, he's clearly not in control of this of this press conference and, or this, uh, I'm sure, the interview either. But it's uh, it's quite interesting. I have to take objection uh, to one thing Premier Smith is saying here about putting it everything off to 2050. You know, this is 27 years away. I don't think she'll be in politics anymore <laughs> at that point. Uh, I don't even. I don't think I I'll, I'll be reporting at that point anymore. And a lot of it's going to be a whole new generation of people. So it's easy to put it off at 2050. I don't think it's going to be any more realistic then. And it's, but you know, this is, this is what she feels she has to do to avoid short-term disaster. Is not possible by 2035, which is the, the federal target. We've been told that by our experts here. Uh, we also know that an emissions cap uh, or emissions reduction, such as the one that's been proposed of 42% by 2030 would also result 
in essentially a production cap, which we don't think is uh, realistic or feasible as well. And we know that um, the government had negotiated Article 6 into the Paris uh, Climate Accord, which should allow for us to get a credit here for reducing emissions abroad. And we would like to be able to work with the, our partner in British Columbia and the government in order to be able to reduce emissions and get, and get credit here through LNG export. And of course, they've also sent to, uh, given him a letter to take away on my, our request that, we, that Parliament be recalled so that we can uh, put an end to the port strike in, uh, in, in BC, which is causing extreme hardship to uh, our producers and our exporters here. Thank you, Mr. Well, thank you very much, Premier Smith. It's uh, great to see you again. Uh, great to be here at uh, Stampede, a great opportunity to uh, celebrate this extraordinarily vibrant city and the best of Western uh, pride and heritage and culture. It's uh, really a great uh, great moment to be here where uh, mm. the country descends on, on, on Calgary, and it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. So interesting there, of course, we've got uh, Justin Trudeau nodding throughout that whole news conference. And it's uh, it's not clear, you know, whether or not he is uh, really in agreement with things or he's just uh, trying to, his best to look like he is in agreement because he's in Daniel Smith's backyard. But... Anyway, Trudeau always shows up at the at the stampede, you know, in his white hat. And most people there see him as a black hat. <laughs> they don't see him as a white hat. He's not the good guy. He's the bad guy from from Central Canada, and that's always how people have felt in uh, in Alberta. And you know, Calgary has changed over the years, but Justin Trudeau is still not a popular guy in the stampede. He, he always comes out, looks ridiculous in his cowboy hat. And this year, he looked even rid more ridiculous because he tried he tried something else here. Which I think is, uh, you really have to see it to believe it. There he goes. Nope. Oh, Oops. Ah, a little bit of uh, an accident there. Yeah, that's uh, getting the pancake mix all over the place. It says a lot about Justin Trudeau and his, where his mind is at the United States. He gets a lot of his rhetoric goes all over the place. So that's, that is interesting. Now we want to move on to a fascinating story because it, it's CBC. It's classic CBC. Because this is the state broadcaster that gets $1.5 billion a year to operate. It's the state broadcaster. And it's always getting things wrong. And it's is it tendentious? Yes. And, and I mean that in terms of is it, is it a biased news outlet? You bet it is. Now, they occasionally do good reporting. I And when they do, I give them credit for that. But they have too many reporters there who are working for the Liberal Party. And it's uh, it's clear you know, from this story here, you know, uh, CBC did its own story about CBC retracting its own news. But they harped on this for the longest time and claimed that there was an email sent from the Premier's office to the Alberta Crown Council, you know, trying to interfere in the in this in this process at the, uh, you know, the legality of the Coots border crossing, and that she was inserting herself trying to influence the way the Alberta justice system worked. There was no email from the premier's office. And a lot of us pointed that out at the time when the story first ran, that there was absolutely no evidence of this. You know, when premier Smith talked about suing the CBC. She was furious about this and rightfully so because the CBC just refused to admit that somebody either got it wrong or was intentionally lying. And it's very disturbing to see this sort of thing. But CBC has been up to a, had a lot of attractions to make over the Freedom Convoy. At least they're making some of them. I'll, you know, I will give them, I will give them that much, but I generally don't have a whole lot of time for CBC. Now I want to move to our to our last story here. Uh, Sheila Lewis still needs money, and 
you know, I say some nice things about Premier Smith. He's an old friend. We've worked together as journalists. I've known her for decades. And I think she was the best choice for Premier. But I am not going to say everything Premier Smith does is right. And this woman should not have to go to the United States for a life-saving organ transplant just because she didn't get the COVID-19 vaccination. What is going on? Where is the sanity in this? I thought we had moved on. Why is she being forced to go and to have to pay for this operation? Premier Smith needs to get involved. This is the kind of thing she can get involved with. Tell her health department that this is not a reason to deny somebody an operation. Now, if you have a... If you have a ch- haven't had a chance to donate and you want to, go on Gibson Go and help out you know, Sheila Lewis. She needs it. If this is a life-saving condition. And she, she should not have to do it, but she's going to have to do it to save her life. So, you know, we're all behind that. And this is this is what she's been forced to do because of idiotic provincial bureaucracy. And ironically, that idiotic provincial bureaucracy is coming from the most conservative and the most common sense provincial government in Canada. No question about it. It sure as hell isn't Doug Ford in Ontario, and it sure as hell isn't British Columbia, and it sure as hell isn't Quebec. But why is it happening in Alberta? Do something about this, please. I invite you to do that. I also invite you to continue to support independent media. The work we're doing here, it's very important. I want to I want to be on here every week, two or three times a week, telling you what's going on in your in this world and why you need to know about it. So that was my pleasure to come to you this morning. Hit that, that, that subscribe button, ring that bell, and come on board. I know. I hate to ask, but for a small YouTube outlet like this, it means so much. And I've got to keep asking because I need your support. And I really, really appreciate your support. So God bless you this week. For Stan and Gar, I'm David Creighton.